Hello and welcome to Red Red. Today I want to talk about At Swim Two Birds by Flann O'Brien. I feel like I've channeled or created some good juju for uh, this reading year because uh, this is my first fiction book of the year and I've picked a book that is so totally up my alley for uh, anyone who's a fan of the channel then they'll know that I'm really into kind of the postmodern uh, writing, especially uh, one of my favourite authors from last year was definitely um, uh, Donald Barthel me, uh, but then also a lot of kind of uh, Gaddis and a big, I'm a big fan of Joyce's Ulysses and uh, Joyce himself is uh, evidently a fan of this book as we've got a quote on the back uh, by uh, by the man himself. Uh, this book is another postmodern Irish novel. Uh, I say another because it came out the same year as Finnegan's Wake and it's um, you know, from my just brief flicking through Finnegan's Wake, I would say that uh, Finnegan's Wake is definitely more of a sort of intellectual atom bomb, but uh, this book is still extremely playful, and uh, O'Brien has a very sort of masterful command of different types of prose styles, and he's able to use it to explore a, a lot of just really cool ideas that, um, you know, would go on to become staples maybe to the point of being cliche in uh, future postmodern novels but just remembering that this book came out in uh, 1939 is really, uh, you can even feel that it was revolutionary for the time because it still has a lot of uh, cleverness that I think even us modern readers who have seen a lot of postmodern stuff um, will still sort of uh, uh, vibe and enjoy uh, what's going on in here. I'm not going to pretend that I got everything that happened in this book. There's uh, uh, a lot of, like, just even would need to know a lot of Irish history to know uh, what was going on. I didn't even realise until looking it up later that uh, some characters in the book, uh, like Finn McCool and, and Sweeney, are actual figures from, like myth mythological figures, I believe, f uh, from Irish lore, but... Um, uh, yeah, like just this is still a big learning curve, but the book is uh, very enjoyable even just as a first time read. The premise of At Swim Two Birds is that it is a little bit of an Inception style um, books within books. Uh, our main character narrator is an unnamed narrator who uh, lives, who is studying in uh, Dublin University. He lives with his uncle. Most of the time he's pretty much just chilling out, lying in bed and uh, like maybe occasionally reading and writing books. Uh, but um, the books that he is writing is a book about a, a writer. So the character in the sort of second layer is also a writer named uh, Dermont Tre Trellis, who is himself writing a book about certain characters, and these characters actually come to life, and they kind of manifest and they appear uh, to Dermont, to Dermont, and they torment him <laughs> essentially, and. What's really cool is that we go down into kind of deeper levels. Even one of Dermont's characters uh, starts writing, and so we get another, like an, again, another level of writing. But um, what uh, essentially the idea is that there's an interplay between all of the different storylines and the different threads, uh, which you can see uh, basically from the very start. The first line or, or the first couple of paragraphs of uh, this book, chapter one. I also love that it says chapter one and then there's no other chapters, but um, this is the first couple of lines. Having placed in my mouth sufficient bread for three minutes chewing, I withdrew my powers of sensual perception and retired into the privacy of my mind, my eyes and face assuming a vacant and preoccupied expression. I reflected on the subject of my spare time literary activities. One beginning and one ending for a book was a thing I did not agree with. A good book may have three openings, entirely dissimilar and interrelated only in the prescience of the author, and for that matter, 100 times as many endings. And then O'Brien goes on to list and describe the three uh, openings for the book that have to do with all of the different characters. So uh, opening one is the Puka uh, Macphilame, who is sort of like a devil Satan character. Then there's one about John Furisky, and then another one about Finn McCool. And, um, uh, but then there's also a fourth one, which is the narrator uh, himself who also said that, um, uh, who also said those first couple of lines. And yeah, so we go on, and I, I have a couple of extracts to read, but the general idea or, or the thing that I got out of this book was. Um, 
one of the masterful ways that O'Brien kind of guides us through the experience of reading uh, at Swim Two Birds is that he is really, really good at uh, writing in different prose styles, and he uses that to sort of jump between and describe, um, you know, all, or to narrate from different perspectives that make it very clear when he's talking about kind of level one Dublin student or level two uh, de Montrellis uh, and so on. And, you know, that first uh, example that I read gives you a pretty clear idea of, um, you know, the style of the main character, but there's one later on that I'll read that... Uh, um, well, as I go through, I'll read different extract styles, and you'll just be able to see that there's a very clear uh, difference in the way that each section or each layer is written. And uh, so, without anything, you know, there's no quotation marks in this book, so getting a little bit of a precursor to Cormac and, and so on. Um, it's. Uh, even though it can be hard, there are there are a lot of like really little subtle things that O'Brien does that help us, uh, that guide us through the book. And another thing that I liked is something I really like about uh, postmodern work when it works is uh, this sort of sensation or this feeling where you know when you're reading uh, a book and you know say you're tired or you're distracted or something and your eyes are just glazing over it and you realize that you've moved and you've done the physical motion of looking sort of left to right for a couple of lines but uh, you didn't actually take anything in and uh, hopefully if you're a conscious reader you go back and you reread it again uh, just to make sure that you're, you got it um, but what I love is when Pro types of prose do that to you and uh, there were some times when I was reading lines and even some of the extracts that I'll read for you where I was reading and I just got this feeling like the images that are that are happening in my head which are very little anyway because I'm not a super visual person but um, the images that I was uh, experiencing and what I felt happening has nothing to do with the words that are on the page and that's such a hard uh, thing to describe or to convey except to just say you know go and read it um but it's a very like it was a it, it was a great experience and I, I just can't stress enough how mu how much i loved o'brien's ability to um uh, switch between these pro styles uh, and a couple of the metafictional or postmodern uh, elements that i uh, that show up in the book that uh, again go on to sort of become cliches are uh, there are some parts where the book will just stop and will give a plot summary uh, and then another one is uh, later on it'll say oh for any first time readers jump back to this page to read the plot summary and then come back so we're getting a little bit of a Cortaza uh, jumping back and forth and then uh, there's also a really beautiful extract that comes later on where at the end of it he just talks about the literary device or he mentions the literary device that he uses in it um, and I think from there that's kind of it uh, in terms of general I'm going to start reading some extracts there's a chance that the book is spoiled but I would say that it's such an abstract uh, composition that I wouldn't worry too much about spoilers and I'm not really going to uh, talk about specific characters or anything but here's an example of uh, the prose style um, and that is used by level one narrator so the mirror at which I shaved every second day was of the type supplied gratis by Mrs. Watkins, Jameson, and Pym, and bore a brief letterpress in reference to a proprietary brand of ale between the words of which I had acquired considerable skill in inserting the reflection of my countenance. And I love that. That is just something so uh, non-Euclidean grammar is is just uh it tickles it tickles um uh, so much of my literary desires. I just adore it. This is something very funny. So one of the things, one of the cool uh, uh, devices or things that is mentioned um, is that when a writer kind of writes a book, all of a sudden the character appears fully formed, fully fledged. And this is kind of made fun of or made a joke of where the level two uh, writer, De Montrellis, uh, when these characters come to life, they talk about how this character just... Uh, spawned at 25 years old already fully formed and all of these ideas uh, and having all of these ideas and, and everything but uh, the, he then goes on to write this many social problems of contemporary interest he wrote in 1909 could be readily resolved if issue could be born already 
matured, teethed, reared, educated, and ready to assay those competitive plums which make the civil service and the banks so attractive to the younger breadwinners of today. The process of bringing up children is a tedious anachronism in these enlightened times. Those mortified stratagems, collectively known as birth control, would become a mere memory if parents and married couples could be assured that their legitimate diversion would straightaway result in finished breadwinners or marriageable daughters. Okay, and here's another example of just uh, um, level one narrator's prose. I recall that the dexterity and ready wit of this conversation induced in all of us a warm intellectual glow, extremely pleasant to experience. Just like a distance, like you're sort of watching a, or, or like you're controlling a body that has sort of uh, two seconds of lag. I love this. They're talking about um, so some characters. I'm not going to spoil this actually because I do want you to read the book and get some more um, uh, kind of experience it for yourself. But two characters are talking about uh, the fugal and contrapuntal work of Bach, and uh, one of them says, "Counterpoint is an odd number, and it is a great art that can evolve a fifth excellence from four futilities." And I thought that was such a clear way of uh, uh, O'Brien saying, you know, I've got all of these four just unrelated uh, streams going through the novel, but all of them come together to make up At Swim Two Birds. Kind of, you know, maybe kind of tooting his own horn, but um, at least he's talking about it with relation to Bach. I want to give an example of some really beautiful prose. Uh, there'll actually be two examples. Um, and the second one has to do with the literary devices thing that I mentioned before. There was a prolonged snappling of stiffened rods and stubborn shoots and the sharp agonies of fractured branches, the pitiless flogging against each other of green leaf laden leaf green life laden leaves, the thrashing and the scourging of a clump in torment, a jaggle of briar braced tangly brambled thorniness, incensed with a demon in its breast, crack crack crack. And then jumping forward, we've also got this one. Uh, I love this so much. On the brink of night they halted to light faggots with a box of matches and continued through the tangle and the grasses with flaming brands above their heads until the night newts and the moths and the bats and the felicorn eha had fallen in behind them in, in a gentle constellation of winking red wings in the flare of the fire's delightful alliteration. And that's pretty much it that I want to read. I hope I kind of uh, conveyed some idea of just how uh, kind of intellectually stimulating the book can be to read. I wanted to actually, this is one of those rare occasions where I wanted to leave out uh, some details so that I uh, people can watch the video without needing to worry about being spoiled. Uh, I do recommend going and reading it. I think that it's a, um, uh, it's, yeah, it's a book that I actually want to go and sort of research and do more and read it again and take more um, kind of active notes uh, on it rather than just, uh, you know, the kind of first surface level read. Uh, tell me what you thought about At Swim Two Birds. I'm interested in reading more Flan O'Brien, especially, I think it's called The Third Policeman. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any recommendations or suggestions. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.